Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and today we're going to be having a look at some more Irish whiskey. At the beginning of the year, I did make a promise that I was going to cover more and more Irish whiskies if I can, and I've had this sitting on my shelf for quite some time now, so I think it's about time I started covering stuff like this. I actually covered a tea leaf, the single malt, about two years ago, so I'll pop a link to that up here. And uh, it's, this has been sat on my shelf since then. I bought these all together when I went to Dublin. And I don't know why I keep passing over it, but here it is. This is the Teeling Small Batch. And this is aged extra six months in rum casks on top of what else is in there. Now Teeling themselves is a bit of a funny one because it's a distillery now as of 2015. So at the time of recording, they're gonna have some stuff that's probably just about gone over the three year age. But the stuff that they're selling as Teeling doesn't actually come from that distillery. It comes from the Cooley distillery, as was before the family sold it to Beam Suntory. In that sale, they arranged to keep a whole bunch of the casks. And this is what we're trying now. And what they're trying to do is give an idea about the flavor profile that they're gonna be providing from their own distillery in the future. This stuff, because it's the small batch, this isn't a single malt whiskey from Ireland or whatever. It is a mixture of single malts and single grains from their, their column stills. The exact percentages we don't know, but uh, they do say on certain websites that we're talking about a high malt content. So there should be more malt in it than grain, but who can tell? It's another 46 percenter from Teeling, non-chill filtered, natural colored. As you can see, it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. I certainly like the look of it. I'm just uh, still very skeptical about the whole, um, you know, it isn't from them. So eventually when they transition into their actual whiskies, hopefully the quality stays, but we won't know that until we get it. And as soon as I get it on the channel, I'll let you know. In the UK, this one is the cheapest one of their range. It comes in at about 32 pounds. So it's still, it's not like the cheapest of whiskies, but it's in that sort of bracket of affordable whiskey. Let's have a go on the nose and see what we've got. It's got a lovely full nose on it. For me, it's quite a lot of vanilla. Some fruits, like, it's like oranges and apples, that sort of fruits. It's, it's kind of indicative of the rum, but not overly so, so it's not like a really sweet, sugary nose like you would think you would get on like a really heavy rum casks. Really, it's just quite nice. It's um, it's not overly complex, it's, but you have to really kind of bury yourself into it to find those complexities. It's very subtle, it's probably the best way of describing that. Let's try on the palette. Mmm. It's got a huge amount of spice to it that only builds. When you're swishing around, you're getting that spices, but it's really when you swallow that it starts to kind of culminate this kind of high spicy flavor. Really nice. It's kind of almost like cinnamony kind of spiciness. It's not like a peppery kind of spiciness. A little bit citrusy, but I wouldn't have said it's kind of orangey like it was in the nose. It's going more on towards the lemon side of the citrus. Now in my original tasting notes when I tried this for the first time I put that the the palette was a little thin a little watery but I don't think that's fair I don't think that does it justice it's not the most viscous for sure but I'd like to change my opinion to that to delicate it's yeah it's extremely delicate but there's complexity to be had there if you're looking for it I think you could probably neck this back and think that it was a, not a complex whiskey at all, but you've got to give this some time to really open up, I think. I haven't tried it with water, but I'd be skeptical about it. I think it's too delicate for it. This is my personal opinion. If you've tried it, then great. And conversely, the finish is massive. Huge spices. Just keeps going on and on and on. For me, I think it's brilliant. It, it fits in nicely with the other ones, I would say, because I have covered the single malt, as I said before, and I really do like that. 
that's got a few extra layers on it for me but that's where the extra money's coming from right so this one's 32 single malt is a little bit more about 40 pounds in the uk so you are getting something that's a cheaper product and it the quality reflects that but it's still pretty good it's still pretty good and it uh, kicks the pants out of things that are at the same sort of range so i would say if it's one of those things that you've been put off because it doesn't say single malt on the label no age statements whatever i think if it's cheap enough near you it's definitely worth a look at if you're paying over the over the odds for something like this then then maybe not but for me i'm enjoying it i think it's pretty good now this is a bit of a funny one because Obviously, okay, so we know, oh. let's have a go on the nose and see where we're at with it. 